Hello, so welcome to my lecture or lesson. So today we're going to be learning about mass effect and nuclear energy released in 15 minutes. Now let us recall from the previous subtopic of nuclear energy, which is the process of nuclear fission. As you can see here, uranium-235 nucleus is being bombarded by a neutron. Then, an unstable nucleus uranium-236 is produced. And then, a heavy nucleus splits into two lighter nuclei, which is krypton-92 and barium-141, and while releasing three other neutrons. At the same time, a large amount of energy is being released, which is here. Okay, so we ask ourselves, what is the relationship between the loss in mass and energy released? You can see, after the uranium being bombarded by the neutron, it becomes unstable nucleus. Um, the unstable nucleus will be split into two other, two or more lighter nuclei. So in this process, we can see there's two other nuclei while releasing three neutrons and we can see that here that energy is actually being released so what is the relationship and how does it relate so at the end of this lesson or video you assuming as being my student would be able to describe the relationship between the energy released during nuclear reaction and mass defect so the question is what is mass defect well, mass defect M is the loss of mass after a nuclear reaction or radioactive decay. So, after a nuclear reaction, there is bound to be a loss in mass. And so, how do we calculate mass defect? Relating to the nuclear fission process we just saw here in this diagram, um, mass defect M is the total mass before fission minus the total mass after fission which is M equals to capital MI minus M capital MF. And going back to our main question of the lesson. So what is the relationship between energy release and the mass defect? As physicists, we would relate it with formula. So here, capital E, being the total energy release after the reaction, equals to the mass of defect m and the square of c where c is the speed of light in vacuum so i hope everyone is familiar of this equation since it is the most renowned formula in history of physics which was made by the world's most well-known physicist albert einstein now to get a better understanding let's solve some examples so now let's see this question. The question above shows uranium-238 decaying into thorium-234 by emitting alpha particle. So this is the equation. And given that the mass of uranium is this one, and the mass of thorium is this one, and alpha particle mass is also provided. And note that, one atomic mass unit is equal to 1.66 to the power of negative 27 kilograms and speed of light in vacuum is c equals to 3 times 10 to the power of 8 meter per second. So how do we solve this question? So first, we must find the mass defect. So in the previous slides, we learned that mass defect M is equal to total mass before the reaction minus the total mass after the reaction. So in this question, the mass of uranium is ma minus to the mass of thorium plus alpha particle. So here... Um, we know that mass of uranium, mass of thorium, and mass of alpha particle. So we just put in the equation, 
and we get this one and the answer will be 5.6 times 10 to the power of negative 3 atomic mass unit and we have to times 1.66 10 to the power of negative 27 kilograms to convert into kilograms and we get m mass effect equals to 9.2988 times 10 to the power of negative 30 kilograms and then we find after finding the mass effect we can calculate the energy released so energy release we know that e equals to mc square so we just put in the value that we have which is mass effect times the value of speed of light in squared where speed of light is 3 times 10 to the power of 8 and then we get the energy release which is 8.368921 10 times 10 to the power of negative 13 joules so the SI unit of energy we have to know and remember that it is in joules okay let's try solving the next question so the question is the question below shows radium 226 decaying into radium 222 by emitting alpha particle okay we can see here the formula is given so here we can see that the process is radioactive decay okay so and then the mass is given the mass of radium and the mass of radium the mass of alpha particle which is helium as you all know is given and then we get the values of the here we have to remember that this one we have to convert it later then we get and when and the value of speed of light is given as well so first we have to find the mass defect so the mass defect here is the mass of radium minus mass of radium plus the alpha particle here which is helium okay so we just put in the values that we have and then we get 5.19 times 10 to the power of negative 3 atomic mass unit and then we have to convert it to kilograms and then we get the answer which is the mass defect is 8.6154 times 10 to the power of negative 28 kilograms and then after we find the mass defect we can get the energy release by using the equation E equals to mc squared so we put in the value of mass defect times the value of speed of light which is 3 times 10 to the power of 8 and square the value of speed of light then we get the answer which is 7.75 times 10 to the power of negative 11 joules okay now let's try this question so you can see this question is a bit complicated where we can't see the equation the formula is not given so now let's try to read the equation the question a thorium atom of mass 232.038 atomic mass unit decays by emission of an alpha particle to a radium atom of mass 228.031 atomic mass unit if the alpha particle has a mass of 4.003 atomic mass unit how much energy in joules is released in the process so now let's try to analyze this question we can see that the mass of each of the the reactant and the products are given here thorium and we get the mass of radium and also the mass of alpha particle so we have to figure out the formula first 
Okay, so how to solve this question? We have to, firstly, we have to analyze what is the reaction. So the reaction here is radioactive decay. So the formula would be thorium will become radium plus the alpha particle. Yes, so, and then the question asks how much energy is released and you know that the mass is the masses are given so we, firstly we have to find the mass defect so we put in the numbers here inside the equation and we get 4 times 10 to the power of negative 3 atomic mass unit and then we have to find the the values in kilogram so we times 1.66 times 10 to the power of negative 27 then we get 6.64 times 10 to the power of negative 30 kilograms all right now we can find the energy released then we use the equation energy release e equals to mc squared then we put in the values from the mass defect into the equation and times the value of speed of light you have to remember to square it and so energy release would be 5.976 times 10 to the power of negative 13 joules okay so we already solved three questions so i i bet you can solve it um, for the next question so Let's try solving it on your own. Okay, so the question will be. So for the next question is about nuclear fusion. So the fusion reaction below is one of the final stages in the fusion process that occurs in the sun. So we can see here that the formula is given. The masses of the reactant and the products are also given. So, can you solve this um, from the information and the question that we just learned? So, calculate the energy in the fusion reaction using the information given. So, um, the mass effect that we would get is 3.1112 times 10 to the power of negative 29 kilograms and then we put in the values to get the energy release e equals mc squared and we get 2.80 times 10 to the power of negative 12 joules so did you get the same answer okay so a recap of the lesson firstly we learned about mass defect and this equation which is m equals to the total mass of the initial reaction minus the total mass of the final reaction and then we learn about energy release which is the famous equation e equals to mc squared and then we talked about how mass defect and energy release are related and then we solve some equations about it and how to find the energy release in following processes. So that is the end of the lesson and I hope you all understand about the mass effect and nuclear energy release and how it relates. And um, thank you for watching.